Welcome to the Hiken Ashi Candle Strategy Training. I want to tell you that this should be teamed up absolutely with the training that we have on volume because they go together. When Hiken Ashi candlesticks were put together, in fact, even before when Japanese candlesticks were first combined, if you read the history of Japanese candlesticks, you will learn that not only price was watched, but also volume. So we team up both the Hiken Ashi candlesticks and the volume to get the most out of everything. Now let's first talk about, I'm not going to go through the history of traditional candlesticks and Hiken Ashi. I hope that you have just a basic understanding of regular candlesticks, a high, an open, a close, and a low. This is on a down move. On an up move, you have a green candle, of course. You have the low. The low is always the same on all candlesticks. The close is, of course, reversed from a down candlestick versus an up candlestick. But in traditional candlesticks, high open, low close. Very easy to understand where the market opens, where it closes, the high during the period, the low during the period. If it's a day, then it's a day. If it's 15 minutes, a minute, uh, if it's one year, this is what it is. Now, Heiken Ashi candlesticks are different. We're going to go over the math that puts them together, and I'm going to really stress that you do more than just hear my explanation as to how Heiken Ashi candlesticks are computed, and that you truly understand, because for years, I didn't really make myself understand the methodology and the calculation. It's not hard to get, but it's important that you get it. The reason we use Heiken Ashi candlesticks over these traditional candlesticks is that they're easier, much, much easier to identify trends and potential buy and sell signals. You will see that on real charts we'll use during this training. No complicated patterns to memorize, no Hammurabis or three doves, four deer, whatever it is, none of that, and no gaps or fill-ins that you have to do. Now, Heiken Ashi candlesticks were developed by Japanese trader Gyoshi Hosoda, uh, who published the concept in the late 60s. Didn't get to the States until just a few years ago, and he, he wrote it under the pen name Heiken Ashi. Now, that is a Japanese term that means average bar or average pace, and you'll understand that in full when we get to the methodology as to how it is actually put together and how the math works on it, which is simple math. The candlesticks are designed to filter out the noise that you get with regular candlesticks. Those you dealt with regular candlesticks, you know. You have gaps, you have a red, you have, I mean, all sorts of stuff. What's so beautiful about Heiken Ashi candlesticks in a, in a stock or ETF that you can chart is that they flow together. You can actually identify trends more easily. You can also see potential buy and sell signals, I think, more easily, easily particularly when you tag it up with volume. Heiken Ashi candlesticks are calculated to create a smooth line that reduces the impact of volatility so you don't get thrown off by volatility and makes it easier to spot trends. Now, how do we calculate Heiken Ashi candlesticks? Very important that you understand. When you look at Heiken Ashi candlesticks, you will see a close there. You will see an open. You will see a low. You will see a high. You'll see these things on the candlesticks, but they are calculated differently. With Heiken Ashi, the close, and we're using some abbreviations here, HA is Heiken Ashi, R is just regular time periods, okay? So the close on a Heiken Ashi candlestick is simply the average of the current, that is, if you're, if you're using a two-day chart, then you're using to calculate the close, the open, the high, the low and the close, just the regular prices that you see on a traditional candlestick. You're using those numbers, whether it's a down or an up candlestick, to calculate this. Now, you simply average that. So you take the current open, the current high, the current low, 
the current close, you add those numbers together and you divide by four. Now let's think about what that means. That means that the close for the period that you are using, we'll say a day, the close for that day is the average of all the prices throughout that day, the open, the high, the low, and the close for that day. Think about that. So it's showing you when you go to the close, what the average of everything that happened that day was. That's important to understand and to keep in mind. Now let's go to the Heiken Ashi open. That is the average of the prior periods, Heiken Ashi open plus the close divided by two. That's the average. So of course you add them together. Here it is. Prior, now that's the prior period. So it would be, if it's a daily candle, the prior day. So what you're doing there is you are literally taking the Heiken Ashi open and the Heiken Ashi close of the prior day, dividing them by two. That's what you open at. So sort of the Heiken Ashi average of the prior day, and you're comparing that to draw your candle based upon the average of everything that happens in the daily candle that you are using. Okay, so do you understand a little more about the designer's plan when he came up with this to have an average bar so that you're able to filter out all sorts of noise to help you see what's really going on, identify trends, and find potential buy and sell signals to smooth the price flow, to reduce the impact of volatility, to make it easier to see trends. I find Heiken Ashi candlesticks help us do that. Couple more things we need to know. So again, keep in mind what these averages are for the open and for the close. The open deals with what happened in the prior period, okay? The close for your, your current Heiken Ashi candlestick that you're looking at is the average of everything that happened that day, high, open, low, close. Now, the high is the maximum of the regular high for the day, which is usually what it is. It could also be, though, the Heiken Ashi open or the Heiken Ashi close if they're higher than the high of the day. So again, averaging out that price movement for you, the low, okay, is the lowest of either the low for the day or the Heiken Ashi open or the Heiken Ashi close. So again, it's the minimum low is the low of the of, of everything. The minimum high is the, um, the maximum high rather, is, is the high of everything, whether it's the Heiken Ashi open, Heiken Ashi close, or just the high for the day. So again, the plan is to, is to average these things so that you're literally seeing an average bar of price movement. It smooths everything out. Now, What's beautiful is we have some real easy rules and I'm going to go through some charts here in just a second to hopefully put all of this uh, in your mind to help you visualize it and see it. And I'll probably come back to these rules again also because I think they're so important. Easy rules for Heiken Ashi candlesticks. The larger the candle, whether it's a green or a red candle, the stronger the price change. Now that typically goes with any candlestick, but keep that in mind. Wicks opposing the move, that's a wick in the opposite direction, shows weakness. Okay, that's nothing necessarily new, but it's particularly important in Heiken Ashi candlesticks. When candles reduce in size, the move is weakening. Now again, we balance all this off against volume also. Spinning tops and dojis portend reversals, especially with higher volume, and I cannot, I cannot emphasize that any more than just please, please look for higher volume. Now, let's look at some charts, and again, just sort of see what we're talking about. We'll start with spinning tops or dojis. What you see here, this is an important reversal that we see taking place. You can see a prior reversal, same kind of thing happening when the downward movement ended and the upward movement started. You can see 
the various size of the candlesticks. You can see some weakening here. It didn't change the trend. Volume stayed up, even though you had, you know, wicks on the bottom. We talked about paying attention to, you know, wicks opposite the move showing weakness. Well, there's some weakness shown here. You, would, you want all the wicks to be on top for there to be strong continued movement. Occasionally, things will happen. You don't really see that happening on the red over here, but you do see it here. But you see the volume stays up at the average or above, and price keeps moving up. And then you see where price spikes. And then after that, the candles get smaller. Price doesn't hit that high again. And then all of a sudden, we get these two dojis. <clears throat> or they're almost dojis. They're more like spinning tops. Sort of a hybrid of them. A doji, of course, is typically just one line, meaning the close and the open are the same. Now, think about what a doji is on a Heiken Ashi candlestick. Remember, the open is the average of the Heiken Ashi open and close on the prior candle, right? And the close is the average of the high, the low, the open and the close of the regular price during the time period. Now, we're on a two-day chart. That's what the T 2D means here. So <clears throat> that's showing us that there's not a lot of price change going on at all. A lot of fluctuation up and down. And check out the volume down here. Average volume. Now, with a little bitty candle like that, wouldn't you expect there to be a lot less volume? Why would there be a lot of buying and selling and nothing to show for it? Because people are buying everything that's being sold and a lot of stuff is being sold and a lot of stuff is being bought. Now, when we tag volume up with these, what is that potentially telling us? Because we have an anomaly here. You would expect, like with a high spiking candle, with high spiking volume, to have lots of big green up candle. But you don't. What's happening? Well, I would tell you, based upon particularly what we see that happened later, that insiders, market makers, uh, big pools of investors are selling all they have to the suckers that are buying because they've seen this recent spike in price and they are hoping that price is going to continue up and they're buying everything that's being sold actually four days in a row. In fact, it even goes up a little bit on that next candle, even though the range reduces and then finally spikes on the next candle and then rolls over and goes down. So again, doji's spinning tops, these kinds of candles with decent volume can really tell you a picture of the fact that there is a lot going on here as the average pace is slowing down and people are continuing to buy at about the same level as when it was spiking up. It means that the insiders, the market makers, the people that are have been holding on our, this is what we call a distribution phase. Down here is an accumulation phase where the people that are selling up here are buying at wholesale down here, selling at more than retail up here. I mean, they've spiked the price up and they're cashing out to the suckers and then it goes down. They're buying from the suckers here because they bled them out and they've given up. In fact, you can see where they've given up here at the low at the low price points right here, particularly right here, where you can see, again, another doji. Again, showing what? A potential for reversal. And then, of course, things move in the opposite direction. So you can see how and why you want to find dojis and spinning tops after price movements with decent volume. Very important. And particularly where you're seeing price pound down and then not be returned in further down movement here, not being returned in further up movement to the previous highs here or even the previous size candles here. 
And then, of course, you're primed and ready for a down move on the upside and an up, mo up move on the downside. Very important to see. Now, check this out. Here we have, again, down move, down move, and sort of a spike here. But pay attention to what's different than what we saw before. This spike down, I'm sorry, spike in the down move, spike going up in the down move. As you notice it, you notice the volume is down. It's not up volume. It's actually down volume, actually the lowest volume that we see all the way through here. And what does that mean for us? Well, it sort of warns us off worrying necessarily about things turning around. Now, as we also note, if you're drawing a trend line, and we have other trainings on trend lines, you'll notice that the trend line sort of continues to move in the right direction. You can still draw a trend line here, even at the highest point of this candle. We're going to talk about that because you can't do so in the opposite direction here, where we have, again, things dying out and starting to spike down, and then that move accelerates and continues. It doesn't do that here. We have a warning, potentially, with this up move, still have some down move there, and this green candle, but it's not sustained either with volume or it doesn't even break the downtrend. Now, as we look, but it's something to, to look for and to pay attention to, as we look in price bottoms, again, with what? A spinning top. And as that spinning top ends, we see where price has spiked down. Don't have a lot of volume there necessarily portending the change. It does change in price, though, and goes from green to, uh, from red to green, and the green goes up. And then when that begins to end, you can clearly tell it because there's no way to draw a trend line here going up. So again, coupling not only volume when it can help you with Heikenashi candlesticks, but also with trend lines can show you when, unlike here, where the down move can continue even with this anomalous candle here and low volume, when the up move, and again a short up move, when it starts to end, no way you can draw an up candle on this chart with a trend line just following these two greens. It's not an up candle, it's a down candle. And again, we see volume spike, Again, as things move in the opposite direction and start accelerating down. Watching for these Heikenashi candlesticks, coupling things with volume and with trend lines, very, very helpful. Now, as we look at this, we can, of course, see uh, back on very similar chart where things move down, slide sideways. We see volume up and then turn over and price starts to move up. As we look at what happens on this larger candle, we can see a spike up in volume. We can see a nice tall green candle with a wick on top. Then as we move from this candle to the next, what do we see happening? Well, remember, Heikenashi candlesticks, we start with what? the average of the prior Heikenashi open and close. And look, we're about in that middle, aren't we? And then we can see that price has slowed down quite a bit in here. And the close is what? It's the close of the average of the open, the high, the low, and the close. So volume stays all right. It does reduce. We still have a wick on top. We have a slowing down of the price escalation, but it doesn't stop the overall movement. In fact, in this next one, this is we have where we have, we looked at this earlier, we have that price spike at the top, and then we see as things start to fade, we move to smaller candles, lower highs, then the two dojis, 
tries one more and then just dies and things roll over and accelerate down. In fact, you can see those first three candles really accelerating in down volume. So important things to see. You can see on these last two candles, particularly this one, where the volume is slowing down and we have a little bit of movement in the opposite direction where things are weakening. So it's important for you as price moves along to watch as you see down movement on underneath the candle as there is some slowing in the price progression and then when it resumes and then when it spikes and when that starts to peter out and then you're looking for your dojis and your spinning tops to tell you that price capitulation is right around the corner. Very, very important. We talked earlier about as price died, as we got a spinning top and then a doji, and then price took off in the other direction. Important things to look for. <coughs> We've also talked about something to always watch, and that is where price spikes and then can't reach those highs again. We see a price spike. We see a smaller candle, some down movement on the bottom, goes to red, very little volume, isn't ready yet to move over going down. What happens here? Market makers are trying to check out potentially a higher price. There are really no buyers. They are just selling. They can't get the price to spike up. Oh, they can sell, but they can't get the price any higher. Try spiking it one more time on decent volume. Then they pretty much distributed everything they can and they roll it over. Again, you can see these things happening in real time. If you will, take your charts, backtrack on them, look at what's happened in the past on the individual charts that you're looking at, apply your knowledge of Heiken Ashi candlesticks, and particularly, again, these easy rules. The larger the candle, red going down or green going up, the stronger the price change. So that's the price going up on a green candle, going down on a red candle. Wicks opposing the move. That would be an up wick on a red down candle or a down wick on a green up candle in the opposite direction. They're showing weakness. The bigger those are, the more weakness. Doesn't mean things are changing, just means there's some weakness there. Pay attention to what the volume is because the more volume, potentially the more weakness the closer you might be to a down move. When candles reduce in size, of course the move is weakening. Doesn't mean that it can't speed up again. Again, pay attention to volume. And when you see those spinning tops and dojis, they can portend reversals, especially with higher volume. The more you do this, my friends, the more you pay attention, the more you note down what you're seeing, the more this will mean to you, the more you will get out of it the more you will understand. If you can just pay attention to these four easy, important rules with Heiken Ashi candlesticks, team them up with volume and team them up with trend lines, you will be able to see more and more what's really going on and the reality of price movement. And I believe you will be more and more and more successful. All it takes is time and dedication. And again, don't worry about how long it takes. I say that all the time. Why? Because once you become a market master, you will make up for all the time you ever spent. God bless, my friends. Let us hear from you. CW at chartingwealth.com. You appreciate what we do here. Support us as a Patreon supporter. Sign up. Get our daily reviews, once a week weekly review and forecast and all the special trainings. God bless all the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.